Hello, my name is Shadi Ashnai and I'm going to talk about computational audio new in version 11 of the Wolfram language. The Wolfram language allows for immediate representation of an audio object. Audio objects can be in memory or referencing a local or remote file. In memory audio objects like this one store all of the data in the object and this is good for efficient representation and fast processing. However, ability to link to local files or remote files are also available in the Wolfram language. And as far as processing representation and analysis of audio objects, all of them are treated exactly the same and all functions support all types of audio objects. To quickly compare the different modalities of audio objects, I'm reporting a few properties of these three audio objects that were imported into Mathematica. And then we can see that byte count of an in-memory audio object is significantly larger, although the duration of it, for instance, is smaller than the one that was sitting on a, on a server. In the case of local files and remote files, we're just linking to the file and the data is streamed from the file into the Wolfram language rather than being all imported into the memory. There are also options available to the audio object. For instance, the appearance is something that specifies how the user interface of an audio object should be displayed. The default is a basic user interface, a basic appearance that gives us a play um, button, a slider to show where the position is and an ability to uh, move the slider, move the position, a reset button, an icon that specifies whether the object is in memory or referencing a file or, or um, a local or a remote file, tooltips and expanders to other types of appearances. The minimal appearance is simply just a play button and an expander and we have also the detailed appearance which in addition to everything that were, was available in the basic appearance gives us the looping ability to choose device and change the volume uh, as well as ability to show the waveform or the spectrogram of the audio object. Audio objects in the Wolfram language may have different number of channels. We support one for mono, two for stereo, and arbitrary number of channels. Data types range from 8-bit signed integers for compactness to 64-bit reals for precision, uh, and then arbitrary sample rates are available. There are more options available in the audio object to specify meta information, sample rate, sound volume, and so forth. So many of the functions that were existing in Mathematica before the introduction of the audio got updated to work with the audio object and there were so many other functions introduced along with the audio object in order to analyze, visualize, and process audio objects. In the domain of visualization, here I have two audio samples. Audio plot is a new function that basically shows a waveform plot uh, of an audio signal. There are also various options available to change the appearance and the theme of the plot that is displayed. Here I have only a single audio object. This is a two-channel audio object, but also audio plot can be used to show multiple signals at once. Periodogram and spectrogram were available before in Mathematica, and now uh, we are basically uh, upgrading, up, uh, we have upgraded them to work with audio objects as well. Audio objects are very well integrated into the rest of the Wolfram language. Arithmetics like um, times and plus are supported with audio objects and the composition return is, is another audio object which combines the two audio signals in this case. Operations like mean can be applied and apps can be applied and anything else basically to manipulate audio objects are available. Statistical operations such as max and mean and so forth on a single uh, audio objects are also available. Wolfram language used to have a uh, various number of filters. In this case, I'm showing low pass filter and Wiener filter on an audio signal. All of those were upgraded to also work seamlessly with the introduction of the audio object. Audio generator is another function that got introduced in this release. We have various models for oscillators and noise. In this case, I am creating a sign signal uh, with a specific frequency, 500 hertz in this case. The given frequency can be varying in time, so here I specify a function of frequency over time. 
Various noise models available range from um, white to other color noise like pink. And then custom generators can be created, uh, custom audio objects, audio signals can be created using functions and, pro uh, and processes. For instance, here I have another sign tone or a signal generated from a process. Basic editing capabilities got added to Mathematica version 11 as well. Here we have a signal of a female voice saying the word hello three times. Hello? 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 Adjusting amplitude of the values, basically amplifying or attenuating, is implemented in a function called audio amplify. Hello? 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 The sample rate of a signal can be changed to something like 48k for DVD quality. And uh, if I play it, it's going to sound the same. Trimming and padding are also available. So I can take the first second of the audio signal. Hello. Or pad it by one second at the beginning and the end. Hello. 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 Partitioning and splitting were also introduced. So in this case, I'm partitioning to chunks of one second, or I can give some various times and split the audio at those times. So in case one, I get signals of all same durations, and in case two, I get signals of different durations. Conform audio is another utility function that takes a list of audio objects in and conforms the properties of those audio signals. For instance, the set of 10 audio signals that I've extracted from example data contain audio signals of different number of channels, different durations, types, and sample rates. And once passed through conform audio, all of them have the same properties. And this is very useful when we want to do batch processing of a list of audio signals or do some classification and so forth. Audio composition is also available, uh, not only through the arithmetics and operations that I showed, but also through some new, cap new functions and capabilities that were added in version 11. So for instance, here I'm creating two signals. One is a white noise and the other one is a um, table of three, three notes converted to an audio. I can join them so I get noise, notes, noise. And if I plot them, this will resemble what was created in the previous cell. Or we can overlay them so that they are played at the same time on top of each other. So I had only one second of noise and three seconds of notes being played. And arbitrary compositions can be applied using any uh, other combination of arithmetics. Audio effects are another big topic in the field of audio processing. Here we get the same signal of the female voice and uh, I, I'm applying a function called audio delay uh, to add a delayed signal to itself. Hello? 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 One can also add reverberation to simulate an environment like a church or a, or, or a stadium or a specific room. Hello? Hello? Time stretching and pitch shifting are another very commonly used effect. Time stretching with, an, with a factor greater than one makes the audio play slower. Hello? Hello? And using a factor smaller than one makes it play faster. Hello? Hello? Hello. Pitch shifting simply changes the pitch of an audio signal without changing the duration. Hello? Hello? Hello. And this moves the pitch down. Hello. 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 Another set of functionality that got added to version 11 are audio analysis. Uh, global measurements, such as some property extractions, as well as global measurements of histogram properties or other properties, are available through a function called audio measurements. Here we are computing a list of properties for 10 audio signals, again taken from example data. Um, number of channels, duration, mean value, max value, max apps value, loudness, and zero crossing rate. These are all important to identify audio signals. 
However, more typically, local measurements are interesting for comparison and analysis of audio signals. In this particular case, I'm computing the loudness as a time series, and this is the plot that says um, that, that shows the loudness of the signal over time. And for instance, these local computations can be used for finding uh, transients, for finding peaks of the loudness. And uh, this is just a plot that shows the peaks on top of the computed time series. Interval detection can happen using audio local measurements, but also we have a function called audio intervals. Here we have yet another signal, and we ask for intervals where RMS amplitude is smaller than a certain threshold given, um, and plotting those intervals um, on the waveform plot. The same scheme can happen for uh, other measurements, such as fundamental frequency. And if we compute fundamental frequency and plot it, we see that we have five different frequencies uh, in sequence. And uh, we can even run some function like find clusters to find clusters of, of uh, detected fundamental frequencies to detect what are the sequences of notes that were played. More convolved computation can basically lead to higher level analysis. For instance, here we are combi combining RMS amplitude and spectral flatness to detect non-voiced regions of an audio signal. The requirement is for the RMS amplitude to be small, but for the spec spectral flatness to not, not to be so small. And if I plot the regions, the detected intervals on top of the waveform, these are the regions that are identified as um, non-voiced and we can remove those uh, from an audio signal. So that, um, so I play the before and after. There are a lot of people my age that need the bus yes. in, in this area. There are a lot of people my age that need the bus yes. in this area. Further analysis of audio objects can allow for things like computing a signature of an audio signal. Here we are going with MFCC features of an audio signal. And a simple matrix plot of the MFCC features, which is 12 coefficients per chunk of data that is computed, looks like that. And we are taking that and compute a distance matrix for every column of that, um, for every column to every other column. So this is the signal on both sides of the matrix and often people use these to identify audio signals from each other. And similar features uh, can be used to compare two different signals with each other. Here, for instance, we have two recordings of Alice in Wonderland and uh, by, by two different people. And what we're doing is that we're computing LPC coefficients for both signals. And uh, these are basically plots of LPC for the two recordings. And again, computing the distance matrix for uh, one feature to another, which uh, gives us sort of a comparison between the two signals. In order to see the full list of capabilities that are added, we have put uh, all of the listings of functions in, in the guide page for audio processing and all the filters and processing functions in signal processing. There are uh, three tutorials available for basics of an audio object, processing and synthesis of audio objects, and uh, a lot of complete examples on our marketing page. Thank you.